Namaste and welcome to our webinar this evening. Our topic today is uh, immortality and uh, it's a fascinating topic, uh, something that we all think about. But before we go deeper into the topic, let us take five minutes to just center ourselves from the busy Monday we would have had in office or at work and focus the divine power that is running within us. So let's all inhale and tense the whole body and exhale and relax. Let's do this two more times at your own pace. Inhale, tense and relax. And one last time. Inhale and tense and relax. Let's practice three rounds of triangular breathing. Inhale to the count of eight. Hold to the count of eight. And exhale to the count of eight. I'll count for you. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. And exhale. And now let's offer a prayer to the Divine. Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters, Saints and Sages of all religions, Shower your blessings and grace upon us that we may be able to resurrect our souls into the home. We'll now do a short meditation for two minutes. I'd like to read to you from the book Affirmations for Self-Healing. This is on page 116 on the topic of immortality. You are not your body. You are not your thoughts, your desires, your changing personality. Your body has a certain age, but you yourself have no age. Your body may tire or become unwell, but you yourself, the fatigueless soul, cannot tire, can never know disease. Tell yourself always, I am a child of eternity. Don't be identified with outward form, nor with change, but live in timelessness. It is our identity with change that creates the illusion of passing time. Feel that through all outward changes, you, the immortal soul, remain the same. Death itself will be what one more change. Be not identified with it. Then, when death comes, you shall rise 
in eternal freedom. It's a very comforting thought when we are in the midst of grief, in the midst of trials, to be able to rise above it and realize that the soul itself is not at all affected by all of this. But in our everyday life, we go through those points when we start to question, is there life beyond this? How do you know? Well, most of us don't know as we go through life. But we have the teachings of our masters, of realized saints, and the many books and talks that we can listen to where they have described reincarnation in a lot of detail. I particularly recall this talk of Paramahansa Yogananda, which was given on one of his birthdays, where his devotees had brought a nice cake for him and put one candle on the cake. And he said, my age is one. And what he was reflecting there was the timelessness of the soul's journey. He said people have asked him many times what his age was and he would say to them, why don't you guess my age? And the guessing would be anywhere between 25 to probably 700 was the highest quoted. And he said, well, it is timeless. So it's best to say my age is one. Many of us wonder why is it that we are not able to remember our past lives if they existed. Master says it's a great blessing that we are not able to remember our past lives because there have been so many of them, some of them more uplifting and some of them as we are on this journey may be better forgotten. He shares for example that suppose in a past incarnation you were a murderer and you were able to remember that incarnation, how terrible you would make this life for many reasons. One, the memories may haunt you. At another level, you might feel that, okay, this is what I have been, so there is no hope and the despondency sets in. And probably start to murder more people in this lifetime, which further depletes our progress. And therefore, it is best that we don't have all these memories. There are certain situations in which we know of people who go for a past life reading. It's good to go through that, but not just for the sake of curiosity, but only if there is something that is debilitatingly affecting us in this lifetime, like a particular condition in the body or a state of the mind where there is restlessness and, and probably this is the only way. But it is best avoided to go back into those past lives. Because, like we heard in the reading, it is changeless times that we need to identify with and not all those past incarnations that we feel to hold to. The law of karma has a great role to play in the incarnations that we have. And therefore, I think it is very pertinent to narrate a little story that Master shared to help us remember what happens when we hold on to dear life or dear lifetime. There is the story of a man he shared who was very wealthy but he had a lot of challenges on the health front and towards the end of his life the angel came to him and asked what is your desire at this point and he said my only desire is in my next life I am healthy. And the angel said, so be it. So the wealthy man reincarnated in his next life with a strong and huge body and a very good metabolism. But he didn't have money to feed himself and he was miserable all his life. On his deathbed, the angel appeared again and the angel asked him, any wishes that you have? And the man said, yes. In this life I have been very well healthy, but I didn't have enough to feed myself. 
So in my next life, I want to be healthy and wealthy and happy. And it would be good if I can also have a good wife. So in his next life, he had all the three desires fulfilled. He was healthy, he was wealthy, and he had a beautiful wife. But his wife passed away. As he, still he was a young man and he grieved for most of that lifetime for his wife who departed before him and he kept looking at various things that belonged to her and mourning over them the entire lifetime. As he came towards the end of his life, the angel appeared again and said, any desires? And the man said, yes, this time I have only one desire and that is that I need a wife who lives as long as me. The desire was granted and this time he had health, he had wealth and he had a wife who lived very long just like him. But as he got towards old age, he had got fascinated by a more attractive young secretary in his office and he left this wife for the young secretary who was with him as long as his wealth was hers to take and once she had all of that in her name, she dumped him. The man was miserable once again and as he approached the end of his life, the angel came to him and said, any desires this time? And the man said, no, no more desires. I want only God. I want only to rest in him. It took us all years of lifetimes to get where we are. But we look at our lives at this point. What do we end up doing? A lot of times we are stuck with the difficulties in our life, whether it is the illness of ourselves or a loved one, or the little more money that we wanted, or that bigger house that we were looking for, or something or the other, the child who is not perfect. We end up identifying with these limitations. And we forget that all of this is a drama on the stage of life. Master in one of his articles shares this beautifully, where he says it's all a large divine movie and all the actors have their roles to play. And they play the role and at the end of it, they leave the costume, leave the body and go back and come back to adorn another role. The game is, are we able to perfect the role that we are given to play? Or do we just identify with the limitations of the costume, of this body? And just worry and wail about what is not with us. There's a beautiful explanation that Parvansi Yogananda shares towards the end of this article, where he says, you have to play this role again and again till you perfect it and then God says to you, come take the box seat of immortality and watch the drama of life. It is the box seat of immortality that we all aim to get to and that is when perfection is achieved. But the trials and tribulations on the way are many. It is so difficult to just in this lifetime not create more karma. That is the challenge of the devotee on the spiritual path. We have so many attachments, we have so many distractions that are calling to us time and again. The other thought that often thoughts our mind is what will happen to all the good things? Will I lose this? Well, the comfort is, the saints and masters have promised that nothing is ever lost on the spiritual path. You always build from where you left things. So, why waste time? Why identify with our deficiencies or moods or things that may have come to us from the past incarnation? As soon as we are able to raise our consciousness and be on the expressway, everything falls away and God and gurus come to our rescue and see us through this trial. I would now like to, for all of you to join me in 
the affirmation on immortality. But before we do that, let us just take a pause, center ourselves, be in the meditative posture and gently close your eyes and raise your gaze to the point between the eyebrows. And at that point, let us make this affirmation of immortality. So you repeat loudly after me and then softly and then in a whisper. The last time you do it mentally. So the affirmation goes like this. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am changeless spirit at the heart of all mutation. And now softly. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am changeless. Spirit at the heart of all mutation. And now in a whisper. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am changeless. Spirit at the heart of all mutation. And now mentally. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am changeless spirit at the heart of all mutation. And one more time mentally with all your concentration at the point between the eyebrows calling to God and Gurus. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit at the heart of all mutation. Let's offer a prayer. Please repeat after me. Wherever my body travels outwardly, let me feel thy changeless presence within. Wherever my thoughts take me, let them return always like prodigal children to find repose in thee. So, as we look at this journey of immortality, we always think about what is it that we can do as individuals in this lifetime. The message from Master always was resurrect your soul and re resurrect your soul by living rightly, having the right attitude, having a good sadhana, practicing Kriya Yoga if we know this. These ancient techniques help us get past incarnations and burn the seeds of karma much much faster. Meditation is an important step if we are a beginning, beginner on the path and do it with devotion and love, offer it to God and have faith in his ability to rescue us 
at the end of life. I would like to close with a reading. This is from the book How to Achieve Glowing Health and Vitality. And in this, Paramahansa Yogananda shares, You are immortal. Resurrect your soul from the dreams of frailty. Resurrect your soul in eternal wisdom. What is the method? Relaxation. Self-control. Right diet. Right fortitude. Undaunted attitude of the mind. Refuse to be defeated. Don't acknowledge defeat. To acknowledge defeat is greater defeat. You have unlimited power. You must cultivate that power. That is all. Meditation is the greatest way of resurrecting your soul from the bondage of body and all your trials. Meditation. Meditate at the feet of the infinite. Learn to saturate yourself with him. Your trials may be great, but the greatest enemy of yourself is yourself. You are immortal. Your trials are mortal. They are changeable. You are unchangeable. You can unleash the eternal powers and shatter your trials. There is so much power that God has given to us as intelligent incarnations. There is free will and that is how as human beings we are different from the lower forms of life. Free will to seek God or to go away from God. And it is the world of duality that we live in. For every high, there is a low. For every happiness, there is a sadness. But there is still that inner stillness and the ever-changeless soul that helps us cope with all of this. The moment we detach ourselves and see this whole drama from a distance, resting in God, Everything becomes easier and we surrender ourselves to God and he comes and says, I will take you to the shores of infinity, to the home of the Father. And that is the divine promise that every devotee has. Where Paramahansa Yogananda said, at the end of your life, I or one of the masters will come and take you. That is such an eternal promise. And all we have to do, if we were to look at it very simplistically, is to live our lives rightly and not worry about what's happened in the past or be anxious about what comes to us in the future. Live in God and rest in God and remember that we are all immortal souls. That's all we are. And that is the memory and the only memory we want to live with. Om. Oh.